Learning how to meditate is a good object lesson in karma. Two points are important to keep in mind. One, karma is the intention. And that's what you're working with right here, your intention to stay with the present moment. You can use the breath as an anchor, knowing that as long as you're with the breath, you are in the present moment. The reason you want to stay in the present moment is because you want to watch two types of karma, your present karma and your past. Past karma is what comes in by way, of, by way of the senses. This includes not only the outside senses, the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, but also your internal sense, the mind, thoughts that come popping up in the mind, or past karma, i.e. the results of past intentions. Anything that comes up unbidden. It's a leftover reverberation from something you intended in the past. What's important is what you do with it. And that's what you're learning as you meditate, is how to be very skillful in the present moment, dealing with whatever comes up from past karma. The basic lesson is you want to learn how to be skillful regardless of what's happening. Things you like, things you dislike, you're going to learn how to treat them skillfully. And the first step is to ignore them. One thing you're going to be focused on is the breath. And you're going to learn lessons here about karma as well. The breath, of course, is an aspect of the body. And sometimes the way you breathe is affected by things you did in the past. Just as the pains you may feel, say, in your hips or in your knees or whatever may come from things you did in the past. But there's also an element that you can change in the present. Because there is an element of intention in how you breathe. And so you can experiment. What kind of breathing feels good right now? Try long breathing, short breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light, deep or shallow. There are lots of different ways you can experiment with the breath. And you can play with your understanding of the breath as well. When you breathe in. Where does the sensation of breath stand out the most? And what notion do you have of exactly what's happening as you breathe in? What's pulling what in? Can you breathe in, breathe out without a sense of pulling or pushing? In other words, just let the breath come in, let it go out wherever it might want to come in and go out. Can you think of the breath coming in and out through every pore? Can you think of it coming down from the top of the head? Can you think of it coming in through the soles of your feet, the palms of your hands? This breath here doesn't mean the air coming in and out the nose. It means the flow of energy. And there's a lot to play with in the process of breathing. And as you play with it, you begin to realize that okay, the way you breathe does have an element of your present intention. It's not automatically, totally past karma. And as you get more and more familiar with the breath element in the body, you can deal with other things like pains that appear or distractions that appear. Because it's so easy to turn those into little worlds. You get tied up in the pain and it becomes a rack in which you torture yourself. Just because there's a pain in the body doesn't mean you have to suffer. We're good at suffering from pain. We're very adept at that. But it's not really a useful skill to have. There are better skills for dealing with pain. 
If you feel a pain in a part of the body, how do you breathe around it? How does the breath energy feel in that part of the body? How does it affect the breath energy in other parts of the body? You can explore this. The pain feels like a solid block that prevents the energy from flowing in the body. Remind yourself, pain is not a block. You've turned it into a block, but it doesn't have to be one. You can breathe right through the pain. There may be something subconscious in your mind that says, well, if you breathe through the pain, that may spread the pain in other parts of the body. And the reason it's all locked up like that is so you don't want it to spread. But that may be based on a misconception. So explore that. Can you breathe in such a way that you're not in a world of torture, a world defined by the pain. You're in a world defined by the breath. And pain is an interloper, something that's there, but it's not the main part of the story. The same goes with distraction. When a thought comes into the mind that pulls you away from the breath, what happened to the breath? How does the breath energy feel in the body as a thought forms? You can watch that, you know. Again, we're so adept that whenever a thought comes by, you just jump right in and go with it. Can you maintain your frame of reference with the breath and just watch the thought as an event? And when you see the thought as an event, notice it has both its physical and its mental side. What is that physical side like? How do thoughts occupy your body? There's a really nice little cartoon one time about a meditator. She's sitting there, and all of a sudden the word think appears in one part of her body. And then in the next panel, a few more thinks are scattered around, some in her head, some in her arms. And in the final panel, her total body is blotted out by think, 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 think all over. In other words, we shift our frame of reference from the body to the world of the thought. And as a result, the body gets blotted out. But can you see the thought arise simply as, again, an interloper in the breath, but without your jumping into the thought? You stay inhabiting the body, the world of the breath. And notice the contours of the thought as it begins to form, and the points where you might be tempted to jump in. The jumping in is your present karma, and you have the choice to jump or not. This is one of the things meditation does. It makes you realize you had a lot of choices that you didn't realize you had before. You're already making them, but they're being made by automatic pilot. And they may be skillful, and they may not, because you don't really know unless you make them consciously, and then you can watch the results. That's why you learn how to deal with things as they come up in a skillful way. A huge wave, wave of emotion may come over you, but you just let it crash and go. You don't have to react. Now, that doesn't mean you've purified yourself of that particular past karma by not reacting. What has happened, though, is that you've learned how to purify your present karma. It's more skillful, less harmful. Because the particular instance of karma in the past that caused that emotional wave, that could come back again and again and again. Who knows how many times it's going to keep rewinding and coming back into your present experience. But that's not the issue. The issue is how do you treat it now, each time it comes? You learn how to treat it skillfully, using the skills you've learned from the breath, the skills you've learned from perception. Your mindfulness that reminds you not to get involved. So try to stay intent on the breath. You learn a lot of lessons about karma as you do. And the lessons you learn from karma will help you stay with the breath more securely. You understand what's going on in the mind. When something comes popping up into the mind, it doesn't automatically have to be turned into present karma.
you can see, oh, this is past karma, but what I'm doing right now is something separate. I don't have to go plunging into that thought or plunging into that pain. Keeping it alive by making it more present karma. So it's in this way that theory and practice help each other along. You know, the theory of karma helps you understand what you're doing as you practice. And as you practice, you begin to see for yourself that the theory is right. It's a useful tool. This is why when I asked a John Fu one time, this is very early on in my time, but what you have to believe in order to practice meditation. He said one thing, karma. He didn't explain any further. But what he meant was that your present intentions are important and you can train them. If they weren't important, how could you train them? How could you meditate? If everything was predetermined by past karma, there would be no point in sitting here. We'd be sitting here because of some mysterious force from the past. But there'd be nothing we could do about it. But we can. And once you understand, that's the Buddha's main teaching on karma, is what you can do in the present moment. And learn how to untangle this issue of what's past and what's present karma. You find it really helps your meditation. See deeper and deeper into the big problem of the mind, which is the suffering that we create for ourselves and that we don't have to. That's what makes the meditation special.